Every single day, these cheap Intel Macs are getting even cheaper, but should you buy them? Welcome back to the channel. So what I wanted to talk about today is these very inexpensive Intel Macs are getting cheaper every single day. And the reason for that is because these M chip, M1, M2, M3 chips here are getting so much better, right? Every day these are getting better. These are getting cheaper over here. So the question is, should you really buy one? All right, so when I make a video like this, I always want to tell people, I always get comments and they're like, you're crazy for telling people to buy Intel Macs right now, all right? I get tons of those comments. Everyone should buy an M series Mac, they tell me. But let me tell you something. A lot of times those people that are saying that either have the financial means to do it or they have parents that have the financial means to do it, all right? You know what I mean. But they don't really have, a lot of, like a lot of other people in the world, there's a lot of people that don't have the means to buy a $1,500 MacBook like this, $2,000 MacBook, $3,000 MacBook, or even a $1,500 monitor, or whatever it is. It's just not, you know, they're not, they don't have that reach for that kind of money. And uh, that's totally acceptable. So the question is, is are these acceptable over here? Now, I'm not arguing you shouldn't buy one of these. I mean, if you can afford this, you have the means, and you also have the, the reason to buy one, definitely pick up the M series. It's going to be a lot less of an effort for you. Absolutely. These are great machines. So I'm not saying that. This is going to be if you're considering something like this. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys some of the deals out there on these kind of older Intel kind of systems over here. You're going to be shocked. So I'm going to show you like eight or nine systems that are just crazy inexpensive to see what you can get right now in 2024. And then I'm going to also talk about how these perform as well. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to kind of wrap everything up and tell you my kind of ultimatum on when you should really buy these and what you have to do to them if you do want to buy them. So stay tuned for that last piece because it's kind of important. All right, just first of all, I have two sitting right here, and I'll, I'll have links to some of these videos in my video description, but this is a 2014 Air right here with 8 gigs, 256 gig SSD, and this is a 2014 MacBook Pro right over here. Now, these are pristine condition. This is, again, 8 gigs, 256. These are pristine condition MacBooks here. They look like they're brand new. I got this for like 170 bucks right here. This is, a, again, four, 2014 MacBook Air. The MacBook Pro over here, which is even better condition, I got for 127 bucks, and the the reason was is that the audio port wasn't working, but everything, including the screen, everything else was working perfectly. So I basically use these when I travel. So instead of having a, tra you know, a laptop out there where I can lose it or have some problems with it, I just travel with these things, and they're great for it. I mean, they can do everything that these other systems, you know, can do. Also, they can do, you know, browsing and emails and even a video conference call if you need to do that, or they can do pages or Word and stuff like that, just fine. In fact, I can even do 1080p on these, especially the Pro version, video editing, 1080p almost flawlessly. It's very good on that. And I can even do 4K in a pinch. Now, would you want to do it all the time? No. But in a pinch, like let's say this thing broke or that thing broke, I could do it if I had to. That's good to know. So at the end of the day, these things are, you know, 2014, 10 years old, are about as good as a $400 Windows laptop. I'm, I'm telling you, I test a lot of things and I can tell you that honestly they are. So that's about the realm you're at, like a four or $500 Windows PC, depending on the version and, and the chip and everything. But they're definitely faster than like Celeron chips and stuff, so they can get some work done. Now let's take a look at some of the deals that are out there on these things right now that you could maybe buy. And again, these are going to be subject to change, but let's just see what's there now. So the first one's kind of a crazy deal. Look at this. 2017, 13 inch. It's got i5, 256 gig, and 16 gigs of RAM on this thing. Only a 2017. What is this? 279 right now. Great deal, right? I mean, it's going to work just fine, but it says in here grade D. So why is it a grade D? You got to find deals like this. Take a look at this. If you look at this, see this little sticker that used to be here? It faded onto the outside, so it looks like a little skeleton. The front of it looks crazy too. Look at this thing. It's all got these like little marks on it because it's all like just, I, you know, they had decals on there and they can't come off now. But the problem is, is all you got to do is go out and get a skin. I'll have a link to this skin actually in the video description if you want to pick one up. But you get a skin like this and skin this thing over here. And, uh, and then you can buy this system for 200, what is it, 279 and have a perfectly working 2017 MacBook that looks great with the skin and you don't have to worry about what the other person had on it. It affects you in no sense. I mean, it doesn't even matter what it looks like really, but if you want to change it, you can change it. Now let's keep going down the list here. So here's another one, 120 bucks for a 2015, one year newer than this one. It's got eight gigs, 256. Now I always say get at least eight gigs, get at least 256 and always get SSDs. That's the main thing, eight gigs, SSD, 256. Make sure all computers have that. Never get a spinning drive. So this one is what, 120, very inexpensive. This says what is a grade D here. But really, if you look at this, it's got like a small dent in the corner right here. So if you're looking at this for just work, everything else looks perfect on this thing. Look at the front of it. it looks perfect. It's got that little dent on the side down here. And that's a drop the cost of that to 120. So you can pick that up really cheap. 
Now let's keep going. Here's a couple things I wanted to show you. Here's one for 226. It's a, what is this? It says grade D. It's got 512 gigabytes, 16 gigs of RAM. It's an uh, i7 here. Now why is this one, um, you know, 226? What's the deal with this one? If you look at this, something like this has got delamination on the screen. See that there? Now, I would usually say stay away from this, but if you can find a really good deal on a delamination screen, definitely pick one up because first of all, you can't see it when the computer's on that well. You can see over here in this picture. It doesn't show up that well, but even if it does, there's a video out there that, um, I don't know if you know Austin Evans, he's got a sub-channel called Danky or D-E-N-K-I, see it right here. And inside of here, you can see he's actually cleaning it with Listerine. So he takes a towel with Listerine on it. He takes that and it removes that delamination after about 20 minutes. Check out that video. Pretty crazy. If you know that, then you can maybe pick some of these up for cheap and actually then make them look almost pristine. But beyond that, let's keep going down the list here. 200 bucks on this one. Look at this. MacBook Pro 16 inch, 2019. 8 core, um, what is it, i7, 16 gigs, 512 for $200 for 2019 MacBook Pro, 16 inch, mind you. How is that possible? That thing was like 3,000 bucks just not too long ago. Well, again, you gotta find, you gotta be creative here as well. Take a look at this. If you look at it though, everything's in pristine condition. See this, it, there's not a scratch on it, but the screen, the screen is broke. Look at that. The screen actually has an issue going on. And so you're gonna say, well, why would I buy something with no screen, obviously? Well, because you can close it and you can put this into a clamshell mode and use it on your desk just like this right here. And nobody will be the wiser of it and you can actually have it work just like a Mac mini, but it just sits on your desk or under your desk and you just never open it up. But it's still a computer, it'll still connect to an external monitor, Bluetooth with the keyboard, and it'll work perfectly as a Mac, and you're getting all that for 200. And then if you don't even want to deal with issues, look over here. This is 154. This is a 2017. It's an i5 7360, 8 gigs, 256. Only 154 bucks. Can you imagine that? That's how cheap they are now. A couple, maybe two years ago, that was going to be double, triple that. Keep going down the list. Here's 351, 512. This is an i7, 6820, 16 gigs of RAM. So 351. So these are more kind of common prices you're going to find right now, but still really cheap compared to these modern M series Macs. And then just a few more I want to show you here. So 274, this is a 2015. This is going to be the 5K iMac that you see here for 274 bucks. Now the problem with this one is it's 2015, but it's a one terabyte, that's a spinning drive, and then eight gigs of RAM. So what I would do with something like this is I would buy it for two something. I would boot off an external SSD drive, like a Samsung external SSD drive. You're going to get way faster to boot off of that have your OS on that, and then also just add some RAM to this thing. And this thing's gonna be a powerhouse, and you're gonna get a screen that's costing 1,500 bucks right now, and you're gonna get the computer with it for 249. But you might want something newer, and if you do, look over here. This is a 2019, 2020 iMac, 27 inch, 5K again, that beautiful $1,500 screen. One terabyte SSD, mind you, that's an SSD. Just the SSD would cost 800 bucks on one of these things. And then you got, what is it, 16 gigs of RAM? $899, think about that for a second. So $899 for a computer that's got the $1,500 screen, a one terabyte SSD, which is more, you'd pay more for the SSD on a system like this now, and you're getting that all for $899 on an Intel Mac that's still only a couple years old. You're gonna have all of the OS updates and stuff for a little bit longer. It's a great system. And then I even use, I do all my video editing, most of it right now, in a 2017 5K iMac sitting over there. And here's one over here. This is another place, OWC, 649 right now. You can go ahead and build this out, add a little bit of RAM to it, and you're golden. I mean, you can do a lot of 4K video editing on these things. The screens are perfect. They're just good systems overall. And just two more really quickly. Look at this, 99 bucks for a 2014. This is a Mac Mini. Again, just to get into the system, just to start trying it out. Not a bad system. These are not going to be fast. They may be good for like, you know, hooking it up to a TV for some kind of media consumption, but these are still good systems if you actually know what to do with them, and I'll show that in a second. And then finally, here's the 2012. This is the Mac Mini here, and if you look at this, why is it 189 for a 2012? It's got i7, 16 gigs, of course, one terabyte, um, was it, uh, SSD, or one terabyte spinning, 120 gig SSD. It's because you know, a lot of people didn't know, but the 2012s were kind of the sleeper. They were actually the ones with four cores. They were way faster than the 2014s before them. So the 2012s are highly sought after still, if you upgrade them, which we'll get into as well. All right, so the question is, should you really be buying these older systems? Now, if you don't want the frustration, there's gonna be a little bit of frustration, then just go with an M chips, you know, M series chip like this. This is an uh, M2 Air right here. Go, so go with something like a little less expensive, but you're gonna get a lot more power from it and just be done with it. But if you're more kind of into the, you know, wanna venture into this, these are always gonna be a good choice, even now today. I mean, a lot of people don't have 1500 bucks to spend on a computer, let's just be honest. Maybe they have 300 and a $300 computer like this over here is going to be better than a $300 brand new Windows system. I guarantee you that after testing hundreds of units. 
So, I mean, is it worth it? Yes. I mean, even with the damage I showed you and stuff like that, there's some limitations that they're going to have for sure. But, I mean, we're going to have to do something to them, and I'm going to explain that in a second. But even with that, these can do anything you throw it at really up to a certain point. Obviously, you're not going to be doing 3D, you know, 3D modeling and stuff for a job or you know, high-end video editing. But anything else, these can handle, and they're going to just be a little bit slower than these systems over here. You know, I always like to tell people, like, once you actually get these on the same OS and stuff, nothing's going to really look different. The screens are all going to be very similar. I mean, this might be higher resolution, but overall, it's the same OS. Right? The OS doesn't care if you're using an Intel chip or an, you know, this chip over here, which is an M2. It just cares what the application is running. If you can afford to wait a little bit longer for something like this, this thing doesn't care over here. So did Apple doesn't care either. It's going to do the same work eventually as long as you can wait. Now here's the caveat I wanted to kind of talk about though. What I, you know, what I really recommend though is you have to learn a couple things. So when you pick up these older Macs, the biggest, you know, biggest problem with them is you can't update the OS to the newest version, so you can't get the newest security updates and things like that, right? Like Ventura, Sonoma, you can't get on these older Macs, and that's going to be a problem for some people. Number one, you can't always then upgrade the applications either, so you're going to have to use older applications, and that could be a big issue. But there's something out there called OpenCore, right? OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I always tell people about this. You load those things on these older systems. And you can bring these OS's up to the more newer levels like Ventura and they work perfectly. It's actually a very proven system. So you get those extra security updates by doing that and then all of a sudden the only difference between these two are going to be a little bit of speed um, and then you can't really, you know, then you got to just make the decision based off a of price for you. Obviously again, these are going to be better but for the cost of what, 127 bucks, if you can get some work done, I think these are going to be worth it as long as you can use OpenCore. Now OpenCore is something you have to learn, it's not going to be something that's going to be that easy but it's fairly easy if you follow directions. But you can get people, you can pay people to do it for you, find somebody that can do it don't ask me, I can't do it for you. But I, 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 you know, I got too much stuff going on or I would try, but, but find someone that can do it and then basically you know, put it on here even if you can't do it and it'll make the system so much better and I, also the security updates are key. All right, so at the end of the day, if you don't have the money, don't feel embarrassed about this, all right? Nobody's going to judge you, and if people around you start judging you because you're using an Intel Mac or you hear people saying, why are you doing that? That's crazy. You should get this. Then maybe those are people you shouldn't hang around with, right? All you care about is getting your work done, and if this can do it, then why pay money for this? That's the way I look at it in the world, and uh, these are great systems. Apple's got great systems, but Apple's also got these systems that have been great for 10 years now, and they're still pretty good today as long as you do a couple little upgrades like the OS and stuff. You don't have to worry too much about these. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up. That's all I wanted to talk about. This is getting too long like usual, but it, you know, I love to talk about these topics because you know, it's one of those things that's taboo now to bring up Intel and Intel prices are just dropping, but that's an advantage for you actually and you can pick them up so cheap right now that it's, you got to take a second look at them. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. Of course, there's people that can't use them or don't need them or whatever, but if you're one of those people that can only spend so much, definitely consider them. Do your research, and I think it's ultimately a good decision at the end of the day. We'll talk to everybody soon. I make videos every couple days. Please subscribe if you can. Peace.